ESPN Plus. Tonight from the heart of Texas, Waco, Texas, it's a battle of Bears as ninth-ranked Baylor welcomes in Central Arkansas. And hi, everybody. Welcome inside the Farrell Center, the Paul J. Meyer Arena. It is Baylor in Central Arkansas tonight. John Morris alongside former Baylor standout Pat Nunley. Pat the Bears, national champs, off to a 2-0 start to this year. And a couple of freshmen have been very impressive in those first two wins. Yeah, these guys uh, really have a wow factor to both of them. Kendall Brown was one rebound away from a triple-double the other night against Nickel State. And then Jeremy Sohan, 6'9", 230 pounds, can do about everything. He can shoot it, play with his back to the bucket. And both of these guys can really defend. They've really elevated this team in uh, just two games, two short games, as true freshmen. Really impressive freshmen. They are on display here tonight. Kendall Brown in the starting lineup. Sohan will come off of Scott Drew's bench. We are ready to go in this one. Tipping in the Farrell Center, Flothamba jump center alongside Jared Chatham. Bears control the tip, and we are underway. Baylor in Central Arkansas, Bears versus Bears tonight. James Akinjo, the transfer from Arizona. Leaner right side, that one is no good. Rebounded by Colin Cooper. Give you the starters here in a moment. Central Arkansas off to an 0-2 start to their season. New members of the Atlantic Sun Conference previously in the Southland Conference. All knocked out of bounds. We'll stay with Central Arkansas. Well, John talked to one of the uh, Baylor assistants after the first couple of games. He said, you know, uh, we're not we're not playing on the ball defense the way we did a year ago. I said, Coach, are you doing anything that you <laughs> the way you did a year ago? He said, no, you get my point. He said, we've, we've got to get to where we are at midseason form. And there's a steal right out of the gate. Really good defense on the perimeter. Adam Flagler with the steal, and he is fouled heading up the floor. First foul of the night on Central Arkansas. Let's give you the starters here this evening. You see the Bears there in the starting lineup for Baylor. Flo Thamba in the post. Kendall Brown, Adam Flagler, James Akinjo, and Matt Meyer, the five starters for Coach Scott Drew. Baylor's won, by the way, 15 consecutive home games, and that has tied the school record. They could set a new school record for home victories in a row with a win tonight. Man-to-man -man defense by Central Arkansas and penetration. That's the answer to that pressure defense. You've got to make him pay for it. Flagler does and finishes at the rim left-handed. He broke his left hand a couple of months ago, and he's still nursing that. You can see the bandage on his left hand, but uh, really looked good there. First points of the night for the Bears. Matt Meyer deflects that pass, steals it. Here's Meyer, two-on-two -two break. Kicks it to Akinjo. Back to Meyer for three. He left it just short, but Akinjo, the offensive rebound. And he is fouled. A little bit of a slip there by Akinjo. Remember the game the other day, how slippery the floor was? It was, People yeah. just kept slipping all over the place. Almost dangerous, yeah, really. Yeah, right. A lot of guys on the floor. You couldn't tell if it was a charge or a slip or, you know, scramble for a loose ball. But John, two turnovers forced by Baylor in Central Arkansas's first three possessions. The Bears already this season have forced their opponents into um, 39 turnovers in just two games. So they pick up where they left off a year ago. Meyer left open, takes that 17-footer straight away. His first points of the night for a 4-0 Baylor lead. Not real sure how he got that wide open. He hadn't been that wide open in a while. But Meyer will make you pay. Again, really good defense out on the perimeter. Jackson Baker looks to drive in, gives the ball away to Darius Hall, junior out of Little Rock. Shot no good, Bears rebound. Meyer. A little bit out of control, drives, shot no good, but a foul. So we should have free throws coming for Baylor's Matthew Meyer. You know, and that's been uh, a bit of an Achilles heel. The Bears have not been able to get to the free throw line. There's Meyer into the lane, looking for contact, and he gets it. But again, Bears have taken this, se uh, this season only 19 free throws in two games, and uh, they, they usually get a lot of point production at the line, but you got to get there first and Meyer will have a couple. First one good by Meyer. Starters for Central Arkansas, Darius Hall, Colin Cooper, Cameron Hunter, Jared Chatham, and Jackson Baker. The starting five for Coach Anthony Boone, the head coach for Central Arkansas in his third season. Former Ole Miss player. Couple of free throws, 6-0 Baylor lead, two minutes in, first half. 
And you're talking about Anthony Boone in the Ole Miss Hall of Fame, guy that never got into double digits, but just was such an inspirational player they couldn't keep him out of the Hall of Fame. Big bucket for Central Arkansas to finally get on the board two minutes into the game. It's Jared Chatham, 6'8", senior from Los Angeles. First two of the night for the Central Arkansas breed of Bears. Matt Meyer looks to drive in, turn around, jumper a little bit long. Rebound Central Arkansas. Up the floor, shot no good. Rebound Baylor's James Akinjo. B.J. Reeves missed that one, a freshman from Tuscaloosa from the near side. Three by Meyer. Meyer very active here, missed it. Flow Thamba the rebound. Put back, won't fall. Got it back, has it knocked away. Dive on the floor for that loose ball, and it is tied up. A literal dive on the floor. You know, and, and that was um, that was an Achilles heel for Thamba a year ago, John, is the inability to finish at the rim. I mean, he, he uh, got an offensive rebound. He was in traffic, obviously, not enough to get him to the free throw line. But just uh, when you catch the ball that close to the rim, you either need to get the bucket or a couple of free throws out of it. And he's trying to avoid eye contact with the Baylor coaches as he runs back <laughs> up the floor. He knows he's going to hear it from him. On the plus side there, though, James Akinjo, newcomer to the program, diving on the floor after that loose ball. Coaches will love that and applaud that. A little help defense. Ball lost out of bounds off the hands of Cameron Hunter. Turnover, Central Arkansas. That is three or four here in the first half. Yeah, and they've only taken three shots in the game. Baylor has taken seven. The first couple of games, John, Baylor has outshot its opponents by 40 shots. I mean, they, they just are not allowing their opponents to get shots up. Kendall Brown spins and drives into the paint, and he is fouled. Should have free throws coming. Saw Coach Scott Drew patrolling the Baylor sideline in his 19th season. All-time winningest coach here at Baylor. Of course, head coach of the national champions from a year ago. Great staff. You see uh, Coach Tang, Coach Jakus in that picture, Coach Brooks as well. Tremendous staff here for Baylor. I, I think that just sort of states the obvious. When you win a national championship, <laughs> you're going to have good coaches and a good coaching staff. They do, and uh, they, they completely understand the culture of the program. They live it. Um, they understand what it takes. I think now that you're at the national championship level, you're not guessing any, anymore about anything. And uh, they, they've got all the tools, John, I think, to at least be in the mix again. Kendall Brown gets one of two in. But, John, look at the substitution pattern. Rapid fire substitutions. Three guys in, including the leading scorer, LJ Cryer, comes in from the bench and three guys goes out, go out. But you're not going to lose much with that three guys substitution. Pryor Sohan and Chamwa Chachua come on the floor for the Bears. Uh, free throws were being shot. There's Jeremy Sohan, the rebound. To Cryer up the floor to Kendall Brown, running the floor, and he lays it in. And you can see the speed at which he goes from one end of the floor to the other. That's just not normal. Underneath, a lot of uh, traffic there, but B.J. Reeves puts that one in. 9-4, Baylor on top, first half. Four minutes, 10 seconds into the first half. Kenjo open look there, shot's no good. Rebound knocked out to L.J. Cryer, who is through two games the Bears' leading scorer, as Pat said. 16 and a half per game is average through two games. Yeah, he's still looking for his shooting touch, one of six against Nickel State, but he's not necessarily out there to score. He's a distributor. Traveling call on Darius Hall, turnover Central Arkansas. Bears will have the ball following a timeout. Early 9-4 lead for the Bears of Baylor over Central Arkansas. Back with us inside the Farrell Center, John Morris alongside former Staler Baylor standout Pat Nunley, a legend. We got a lunch with a legend coming up tomorrow. We're looking forward to that. I, I, you know, I don't know how you acquire that sort of status. Maybe it's just you're around long enough. <laughs> and if that's the qualification, I'm in. You're in, baby. But I am deeply honored. That's no, going to be fun. Wait. Tomorrow, uh, join us at noon at the Texas Sports Hall of Fame here in Waco. Going to talk a lot of basketball, Pat. That'll be fun. How about the run to the championship by the Bears last year? 
ending with the uh, April 5th championship win over Gonzaga. You know, it, it's sort of a blur now. I mean, I remember the high points. I remember the milestones along the way. I remember the three-week COVID layoff. I mean, what a journey to the national championship game. But John, you and I have talked about how it changes everything. Nothing is the same anymore. And I think one indication of that is the kind of players that Baylor's been able to bring in. And uh, you see those, a couple of those guys on the floor right now. This is a big time freshman class. Fourth highest recruiting class in the nation, highest ranked in uh, Baylor history. And there's Jonathan Chumwa Chachua out of the timeout, finishing with the alley-oop dunk. You know, that's LJ Cryer on the feed. That's not as easy a pass as it looks like but he put it right on the money. Now, the nice thing is throwing it to a guy like Chachua, you just get it up near the rim, he's gonna go find it. Near steel, far side of the floor, out of bounds, last touch by Baylor. Here it is again, Cryer lofts it up there, and Chachua throws it down. Yeah, made it look really easy, but John, you're right, that was a called play right out of the timeout. It's a man-to-man -man defense by Central Arkansas. They're trying to pressure everything, and one way you make them pay for that pressure is by going back door and it was there, and Cryer put it right on the money. 11 to four, our score, biggest lead of the half here early, five minutes in. There's a steal, pass to the perimeter, stolen by Kendall Brown. He will take it all the way and just nice and easy lays it in. You know, he just glides, he John. Does. You have no idea how fast he's going because it looks so easy. Another turnover, a steal this time by Cryer. And the alley-oop to Sohan, lost the handle. But a whistle and a foul. Jeremy Sohan will get free throws. I referred to those guys, Kendall Brown and Sohan in particular, as gazelles. Just the way they run so effortlessly and cover so much ground so quickly. Yeah, they just move differently. They really and, and again, Brown is just effortless, but he's covering a lot of ground. You know, he he jumps high, but the one thing that really strikes me about Brown is how quickly he gets off the floor. I mean, he gets to balls that are out of his space in terms of rebounding the ball. He's so quick to it. And we're really just kind of scratching the surface with him just two and a half games into the season. Eddie Kailud is on for Coach Anthony Boone in Central Arkansas, 6'7 junior from Paris, France. Three left side, no good. Rebound, Central Arkansas. Five steals by the Bears in the first five minutes. Only one by Central Arkansas. Kyalud into the paint, kicks to the corner. Drive, switch hands, lay up, no. But a whistle and a foul. You know, John, you can see if, if you get broken down at the perimeter, as Sohan did, came out hard, and uh, I believe it was Hall that went right around him. The defense is compromised then, and you got a good player like Hall with the ball. He's a big guy, he's 6'7, knows how to score. He got it to the rim. And Baylor was just late getting there. This guy's a nice player. Hall started his college career at Arkansas, transferred to DePaul, and moved back to Central Arkansas. And he's helping Anthony Boone get this program going again. Matt Meyer back on the floor for the Bears as Kendall Brown takes the seat. Eight point Baylor lead. And he missed it. Rebound Jonathan Chumwa Chachua. Outlet to Cryer. Cryer in a hurry. Passes along the baseline to Sohan. Nice dish to Matthew Meyer for the finger roll. You know, not only can those guys score, but they've got such great court awareness, I'm talking about Sohan and Brown, that they can really pass it. 10 assists for Kendall Brown against Nickel State earlier in the week. These guys know how to play. 10 point Baylor lead, 13.45 to play, first half. Kailu, top of the key. Gives the ball away to B.J. Reeves. Ball lost out of bounds. We'll stay with Central Arkansas. Hit that one again. The dish in traffic from Sohan to Matt Meyer leads to an easy bucket. You know, that's one reason this team is assisting the ball at the level. They're just under 20 assists a game already. Led the Big 12 in assists a year ago. It's always good shot, better shot, best shot. Ball drive to the bucket, shot no good. Rebound Bears in a hurry, push the tempo up the floor. Pryor will drive down the paint, step back 16-footer, no good. Hall rebounds. 
All in a hurry the other way. Ball knocked out of his hands by Everyday John. Cryer, layup, no. Chachua running the floor, gets the rebound. Outside to Flagler, misfires. Sohan with the putback won't go, and then he is fouled on a second offensive rebound. Bears are just um, in charge of the glass. I mean, eight rebounds in the game. They have actually making 12 now, John. Seven of those 12 rebounds are on the offensive end. Compare that to zero offensive rebounds for Central Arkansas. It's one of the reasons Baylor has taken 12 more shots than the Central Arkansas Bears, 18 to six in terms of field goals attempted. That last foul was on the, uh, the senior from Rogers, Arkansas, SK Shitu. That's his first of the night. Leads to a timeout called by Anthony Boone, the head coach at Central Arkansas. And Bears huddle up on their bench, likewise on the opposite bench. Baylor with the 10-point lead here, seven minutes, three seconds into the first half. Except for Baylor, uh, Stanford coming in on Saturday. That'll be an interesting matchup. Stanford from the Pac-12. And Baylor at noon on Saturday. You know, John, the preseason, uh, pre-conference, I should say, schedule is really loaded. you got Stanford, Bears will open. The uh, battle for Atlantis against Arizona State. Play the winner of Syracuse or VCU. I've got Villanova here on December the 12th at Oregon on the 18th. And then you begin the gauntlet of the Big 12 on January 1. Back to play, Bears inbounding. Into the paint, leaner, that one is good. That one rolls in for LJ Pryor, his first points of the night. Yeah, his leading scorer on the team, 16.5 points a game. He is shooting thus far at 58%, I'm sorry, 63% from the four, 58% from the three-point line. It's a guy that barely got minutes a year ago. Yeah, you talk about the guards Baylor lost. Well, they're not depleted of guard talent on no, this team. Not. No, they're not. They've got plenty of offensive firepower. Mid-range jumper right side is good by Eddie Kailu. It's at 17-7. Three minute, uh, ends a three minute, 11 second scoring drought by Central Arkansas. Cryer up top, will drive again. Nice, easy layup by Cryer. Boy, he made that look really easy. He did, that's a dimension that he's added to his game. He came in here, John, the leading high school scorer in the state his senior year, 34 points a game. So he knows how to score, he knows how to shoot it. Been kind of a catch and shoot guy but he's learned how to put the ball on the floor, hard into the lane, draw the defense, and finish at the rim. Drive in, foul called on Baylor. That was Eddie Kailude. Looks like the foul may be on Lothamba. Timeout on the floor will step aside. Baylor with the early 12-point lead on Central Arkansas. Inside the Farrell Center, Baylor leading Central Arkansas 19 to seven. Central Arkansas, we told you, made the move from the Southland Conference to the Atlantic Sun. Head coach is Anthony Boone in his third season. This guy who played at uh, Ole Miss, Pat, you mentioned he had his jersey retired at Ole Miss. Uh, there have been two student athletes, count them two, right. that have had their jerseys retired by that school. One of them is Anthony Boone, the other is a guy named Archie Manning, and that's it. Shows the impact that Boone had as a student athlete. There. And add to that, John, he had career averages of 7.2 points and 4.8 rebounds. So it's not like he set any records there, but he's a Mark Vidal kind of guy, right? He um, is just inspirational, makes other players better. This is a really interesting guy, Ole Miss Hall of Fame. He has a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering and a master's in mathematics. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and he's coaching basketball. You're not going to outsmart him. <laughs> How about that? He was also, there's a connection with the Drew family with Anthony Boone. We'll tell you about a little bit later. Coach uh, Homer Drew may be tuned in to us tonight. He's smiling. He says, yeah, I know what you're going to say. And that is a painful <laughs> memory for Coach Boone. <laughs> it is. Free throws by Kylude makes it 19 to nine. Bears back on the attack. That foul prior to the timeout was on Matt Meyer, not on Flo Thamba. Meyer doing a lot of uh, yeah. one on one there. Puts that shot up, maybe forced it a little bit. It, it really was a force, and you're not seeing much of that from Meyer, at least we haven't. But that you get that shot anytime you want it in the possession, and uh, it was ill-advised at best. But he's earned the right to stay on the floor even after a bad shot. He's got the green light for sure. 
Pass out, deflected out of bounds by Baylor. Officials tonight, Ray Natilli is here, and Tenio Petty and Todd Austin are three officials. 11-minute mark, first half, Baylor by 10 over Central Arkansas. Baylor scored 87 and 89 points in their first two games this year. That's good defense by Kendall Brown. Forced to put up a prayer, shot is no good. Rebound, Meyer grabs the loose ball. Meyer puts on the brakes, everybody flies by, shoots a three and it's no good. Thamba ends up on the floor, looks like a foul coming. And it is on SK Shitu. The Bears have gotten a lot of good looks and that one from Meyer was wide open. He's had a couple of those where he's almost looking around going, where is everybody? And you'd think he would have gotten a better result from that, but Bears end up back at the free throw line. We said before the game they'd struggled to get to the line. This will be free throw number five and number six for Thamba. Bears coming into the game just haven't gotten there much on the season. They've taken only 19 free throws. First one no good. Kendall Brown the rebound put back off target. And the rebound taken by Jared Chatham. So it remains a 10-point lead for the Baylor Bears. Can't go just Bears tonight. <laughs> Got to be a little more specific. Central Arkansas with those uh, uh, purple and black uniforms tonight, purple and silver, their colors. They're the ones with the football field that is alternate stripes, purple and silver here in Conway, Arkansas. Brown drives, bumps off his defender. Ooh, and a charge is called. Player control foul on Baylor's Kendall Brown. You know, that's a nice uh, play by the Central Arkansas defender because that's about really all you can do with Brown. You're not going to take the ball from him. Kenjo down the lane over, watch him get set, and he acted a little bit, but he sold the call to the official. Really pretty good play. You're not going to steal it from him. You're not going to block his shot. You're not going to outquick him. Just got in his way and took his punishment. Turns the ball over to Central Arkansas. Bears take it right back. James Akinjo. Oh, and the alley-oop to Kendall Brown from Akinjo. Well, Akinjo had no interest in shooting that himself. He had a wide open shot, but a little flair for the dramatic, knowing that Brown was coming behind him, he just flipped it behind his back to him. How about that? Two newcomers to the program. Really good chemistry on that transition bucket. Yeah, completely in sync. Come the Bears again. Akinjo on the left wing. Kenjo into the paint again, lobs it up. Kendall Brown with the finish. You know, and that's where Akinjo is at home, in the lane, in traffic. It's a drive, draw, and deliver kind of deal. He's just creating for his teammates. Ball lost out of bounds. We'll stay with Central Arkansas. Here's another look at alley oop from James Akinjo to Kendall Brown. Now he can shoot that, but he decides, I think, let's, let's make this interesting and laid it up near the rim. There it is again. Oh, that's a great shot right there. Yeah, beautiful play. High flying Kendall Brown. You know, and eyes in the back of Akinjo's head, he knew exactly where Brown was. Central Arkansas inbounds. Jackson Baker is back out there. 6'7 sophomore from Phoenix. Baker gives the white ball away to Colin Cooper. Cooper dribbles back near the midcourt strike. Bears lead by 14 at the nine minute mark. Drive, pass on the baseline. Leaner didn't draw iron. Jeremy Sohan, the re rebound, then lost the handle on it. Dives to the floor trying to save it and can't do so. Bears pretty dominant on the glass, 18 to uh, seven. They lead the battle of the backboards. Central Arkansas with just one offensive rebound. So it's one and done for the most part for Central Arkansas. And again, they've only taken 12 shots. Now they've turned it over a few times. They have eight turnovers. But when you're not getting offensive rebounds, you're turning it over, the other team's gonna shoot, as, in, as Baylor's doing in this case, twice as many shots as you are. Elias Cato is on the floor for Central Arkansas, 6'8 freshman from Australia. Akinjo picks his pocket, drops the ball off. Cryer layup, no good. Jonathan Chumwa Chachua can't save it inbounds. And it goes back to Central Arkansas. Pretty uh, frenetic defense by the Bears getting those takeaways. Yeah, that's uh, nine turnovers they forced. And I mean, the defense on the perimeter, what, with Central Arkansas, there's just no rhythm. They're trying to find it here. But what we've seen the last few possessions is a lot of dribbling. And when you're dribbling, you're not running anything. And that's a good sign for the Baylor defense. 
Colin Cooper burns the corner. Left hand layup, no good. Every day, John skies for the rebound. Pass ahead. Cryer beats everybody down the floor for the lay-in. And there's another assist for Akinjo. That's three in the game for him. At this end, there's a block by Sohan. Sohan starts the break. Akinjo, layup good. Started by the block by Jeremy Show and Sohan. Timeout, Central Arkansas. Bears on a 8-0 run, lead it 25 to nine. What they've been able to do, John, is in transition, just get the floor extended, and the defense is feeding their offense. Points coming so fast. Timeout, it's 27 to nine. Baylor on top. Seven forty-seven on the clock. First half. Baylor has opened up a twenty-seven to nine lead over Central Arkansas. Eight-zero run over the last two minutes plus. Bears have hit four of their last five shots from the floor. Add that to Central Arkansas in a four-minute scoring drought. And Pat Nunley, uh, the Baylor Bears who have taken control of this game. Well, they have. And they've done it primarily with defense. They've forced nine turnovers. They've gotten thirteen points off of those nine turnovers. So thirteen of their twenty-seven they've been able to create with the kind of pressure we're looking at right now. Man, look at that pressure. Cato open for a three, shot no good. Rebound Bears up the floor to Sohan. He's got an open look at a three. He'll take it a little bit long. Cooper rebounds for Central Arkansas. You know, these shots are so wide open, I really think it almost gets them off their rhythm. Yeah, that's right. I they're mean, too open, they're, right? They're just too wide open. It almost affects their timing. <laughs> Bears with another rebound in Central Arkansas. Uh, one and done every time they get it on the offensive end. Sohan from the baseline kicks it out to Akinjo, who knocks down the triple. Yeah, on the assist from Sohan. Nice work by Sohan. Hasn't scored yet, but he's got a couple of assists. First made three by the Bears tonight. It's an 11-0 run over the last three minutes. 30-9 is the Baylor advantage. And pocket picked by James Akinjo. All the way, oh, threw it off the backboard looking for Brown to finish. That was not a bad layup attempt, that was intentional. Yeah, again, looking to make it uh, interesting. He could have laid that one in, but he wanted to, to uh, give Brown the opportunity to bring the house down. Three right wing by Cameron Hunter is no good. Just like that, the Bears, their offensive half of the floor. Shot no good, Chachua rebounds, and he is caught in a triple team there. And the foul is on, I believe Jackson Baker. Stops the clock with 6.08 to go, first half. Flo Thamba, and who, Matt Meyer come back on the floor for the Bears. Central Arkansas needs to make a bit of a move here. It sounds easy, but with 6.08 to play, down 30 to nine, they've got to keep it within striking distance if they can by halftime. But they have just been shut off like a faucet. I mean, there, there's the, the Baylor pressure is just relentless. Yeah, how about nine steals in the first half oh, by yeah. the Bears? Yeah, and no rhythm for Central Arkansas. They're, they're a guard-dominated team, but what they've not been able to do is get those guards into the lane to cut the defense up and create. Now the Bears with a little bit of full-court pressure. Lothamba is back on the floor. Jonathan Chumwood Chachua goes to the bench. There's a double dribble forced by that backcourt pressure. Really just by Meyer there forced that turnover by the Central Arkansas Bears. Yeah, that's double-digit turnovers now. for I make it 11, John for Central Arkansas. He really needs to put something together to keep it within striking distance by halftime. Meyer, left side of the paint. Banker, no. Thamba bumped off the rebound. Loose ball controlled by Darius Hall. And a foul by Thamba running by. Just team foul number four. Is that right on the Bears here in the first half? You know, and, and that's a luxury that Baylor will have. They are so deep, eight or nine, maybe even 10 guys deep, that they've always got fouls to give and can continue to put up this kind of pressure. Wow, look at that long range attempt on the alley-oop. A little too tall for Kendall Brown, but saved in bounds by Meyer to Cryer from the free throw line. Beautiful shot by L.J. Cryer. 
kind of like, let me let me get the ball and do what I do best. I mean, I'm a passer, but I'm really pretty much a scorer first and a passer second. Got a good look at what makes him a prolific scorer. Eight in the first half by L.J. Cryer, four of eight shooting. You know, there is firepower, John, still um, on the Baylor roster. I mean, you lose those three guards, uh, you're going to lose a lot of offense, but these guys, have, they're four or five guys that get to 25 or 30. Kendall Brown going in, looking for the dunk. Doesn't get it, but he's fouled by Churchill Bounds. So Kendall Brown will go to the free throw line. That last bucket at the other end uh, snapped a five minute, 52 second scoring drought by UCA. Yeah, 13-2 run for the Bears. And uh, again, just the inability to really make things happen at the free throw line. That's four of seven from the free throw line now. And sometimes that's just a matter of getting the right guys there. Baylor's gotten free throws from Brown, a couple from Meyer, one from Thamba. Pat, you mentioned uh, firepower Baylor has. Here's what they lost from last year. Those four starters, look at those numbers. That's a lot to replace, but uh, I tell you what, this team is very well equipped to uh, to continue the winning ways that they've had the last few years. You know, John, one piece of this is Baylor lost 80% of its assists a year ago from one of the best teams in the league sharing the ball. Steal by Sohan on the inbounds, taken right back by Kailu. And a foul on Sohan as Kailu gets to the front court. So a lot to replace there. Those guys have all moved on to the NBA and the NFL. <laughs> yeah. Mark well, they, they've been able to pick up where that team left off in terms of sharing the basketball. They have been great at that. They had 30 assists the other night against Nichols State. And you know what? They re they adjusted that box after the game. They had 33 assists. 33. what they finished up with. Wow. So they had to change, uh, kind of restat that game. 33 assists, third most in a game in Baylor history. Good hustle by Meyer trying to get to that loose ball. You know, no consistent scoring for Central Arkansas, and I know it's really difficult, but a couple of guys with four but 11 points in the first half, 437 to play. Uh, and they have struggled offensively. They're averaging 59 points a game in their first two. Dale Bonner is on the floor for the first time tonight. Transfer to Baylor from Fairmont State. He is guilty of that foul, trying to get to that loose ball. With four and a half minutes to play in the first half. Baylor up big, 34 to 11 over Central Arkansas. It's a 15-2 run by the Bears to build this lead. Central Arkansas just won for their last 11 from the field. Yeah, UCA not very deep, obviously. The Bears are very deep and continue, can continue to play with the high level of pressure that they're accustomed to. And when you're tired, you go out because when you're on the floor, you go completely out. And again, rapid fire substitutions. Bears keep it at a high level. Well to shoot as Central Arkansas inbounds the ball on the hands of Darius Hall. Jump shoots, misses from the free throw line. Follow up there, uh, V.J. Reeves never got it out of his hands. There's Meyer, the trailer, gets the feed from Cryer. Back to Cryer. We'll give the ball to Thamba, free throw line jumper, a little bit too long. A little range there from Flo Thamba. You know, and he's got a nice touch there. Another turnover by UCA. The Bears off to the races. Bears holding their ground. Sohan, a little bit too much of a head of steam, and he is guilty of the charge. Second personal on freshman Jeremy Sohan. That'll get us to a timeout. Bears. Oh. 34-11, Baylor up on Central Arkansas. Pat, how about the first half going for Kendall Brown? Guy that nearly had a triple-double the other day against Nichols. You know, he's got the quietest 11 points in this game you'll ever see. Now, you can see he's the recipient of some really nice passes, but it's because he's always got his hands up. He's looking to, to uh, cut to the basket, make himself a target. 
Johnny shooting 73% from the floor. He's four of seven in this game, and he does it really at both ends of the floor. This guy brings uh, something special to the floor every time. But again, 11 points, I would have guessed he's got a couple of buckets, but he's already in double digits. <laughs> That's right. On the bench for now as play resumes. Central Arkansas with the ball, down low, shot won't fall for Darius Hall. And then Flo Thamba rips down the rebound. Again, one and done for Central Arkansas there into the floor. Three minutes, 12 seconds to go before halftime. We'll have more on Kendall Brown coming up at halftime. Kenjo missed on the drive, now nearly has the steal. Thamba scrapping on the floor. Well, you know, that could have been dangerous. Two guys were on the floor. Akinjo started to have a full-out dive, yeah. and I think he would have had head-to-head -head with the uh, Central Arkansas. Yeah, players. it was like a fumble in football, but no helmet. No. So I'm glad one of those guys thought better of it. But, John, that's a hallmark of Baylor basketball. When there is a loose ball, they get horizontal. I mean, they get right on the floor after it. And then you'll notice the other uh, teammates who aren't on the floor come over and help their teammates up. Just a really a nice touch, but it's something they really they take a lot of pride in. On the floor after every loose ball. Oh, nice dish. Pryor uh, with the underhand dish to Jeremy Sohan for the slam. Yeah, that's his third assist in the game, Cryer. Cryer leading scorer on the team, but shows a really nice floor game as well. You can do more than just shoot it. First points in the half by Jeremy Sohan. Told you Baylor will host Stanford coming up on Saturday. Central Arkansas goes to Tulsa. They'll play uh, uh, Oral Roberts coming up on Saturday. Paul Mills may be tuned in to us tonight, you think? I hope so. Sam Patterson may be breaking down some film up there at ORU. Sure hope so. What a great season they had last year. Unbelievable. And Grant McCaslin at UNT. A couple of uh, members of the uh, Coach Drew would say, don't call it the Coach Drew coaching tree. That is the Baylor coaching <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I really do. But those guys, uh, two terrific guys, great basketball coaches, and they're not finished yet. Along those lines, uh, North Florida and Matthew Driscoll, they're in the Atlantic Sun. The Conference Central Arkansas is in now. And I saw this today. It's the 13th year for Coach Driscoll. Does that seem possible? No, it does not. At North Florida. <laughs> it absolutely does not. <laughs> What that means is you get you and I are 13 oh, years older. Yeah, than yeah, exactly. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> great guy, great coach. Appreciate those guys and the way that uh, they help build the foundation for this Baylor program. Well, the uh, struggles for UCA continue. They've made just one of their last 14 shots. They haven't gotten field goal down in 251. Looking to get a couple of free throws here with 227 to go in the half. And the Bears very much in command of this one. Eddie Kailu shooting free throws. Rolls off, no good. Rebound to Everyday John. To James Akinjo. Back to Cryer. 11 by Brown, 8 by Cryer. The Bears leading scorers here in the half. It's a collision and a foul. And Kenjo appears to be okay getting up. Well, John, one of the things Coach Drew has talked about using the preseason for a pre conference schedule is to figure out rotations. They haven't practiced a whole lot because of injuries. Uh, Kendall Brown missed a little bit with a groin injury, broken hand, uh, Adam Flagler, and just some other nagging injuries. So they haven't practiced as much as they would like to. It's going to be a really beautiful picture. They're just trying to figure out what the pieces to the puzzle are, who plays with whom, which rotations are best. And uh, sounds really simple from where you and I sit, but there's a lot of science that goes into that. Kenjo a little bit uh, shaken up after that collision, was holding his left hip and kind of walking it off. Does hit one of two free throws, puts the Bears, the Baylor Bears up 37 to 13. To 12 on the clock before halftime. Yeah. Jumper, no good. Akin Joe, the rebound. Oh, nice pass. How about that? Running the floor, the bounce pass to Jeremy Sohan for the lay-in. You know, that's something you take for granted. Bucket at the other end by Reeves for UCA. But, John, at the other end, that's not an easy catch for Sohan to make. He's running as fast as he can go. It's a bounce pass through traffic, through the defenders. He's got to catch it 
and uh, stay on balance, slow down enough to get the ball in the bucket just uh, at warp speed. That's a, a really impressive play. Cryer goes around his defender and just lays it in. Ten and a half for L.J. Cryer. 41-15 is the Baylor lead with a minute 18 to go before halftime. Look at that note. Points in the paint. 28-2, a Baylor advantage. Yeah, UCA is guard-oriented, obviously. They can't seem to score. There's a, point, a bucket in the paint. Hall finally gets one in there. What UCA was able to do is spread Baylor defensively and then use those guards to cut, get into the lane, get open, make themselves targets. And finally, they get a bucket at 17 with under a minute to play. Kenjo drives in, draws contact. He'll go to the free throw line. 49.6 seconds to play before halftime. You know, I'm, I'm watching these refs tonight. This is a really good crew. Uh, those guys seem like they're in mid-season form. They do. You know? We had a conversation with the crew the other night, and I said, back to normal? Yeah. And they went, oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. They're like, this is normal. And they, they had, I, I can't even count the number of games they've already done. I said, we get to go to the Bahamas. He said, we're going. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you there. See you there. Yeah. No, this is great. It, it, it is back to normal, right? Last year was... Dicey, limited crowds, weren't sure what you were going to get game to game. Just nice to be back to normal. A couple of free throws by James Akinjo. There's have four blocks as well here in the first half, none by Central Arkansas. 43-17, 40 seconds first half. Kyalu picks up his dribble. Wild pass over the Baylor bench. Into the uh, literally the third row back there. Just so much pressure, and it's just something they're not accustomed to. I mean, it's relentless pressure. It's every dribble, it's every pass, it's every passing lane, and it never stops. I mean, again, Coach Drew brings players in in waves primarily so that they can continue that level of pressure. And right now, Central Arkansas has turned it over a bunch, well into double digits. About 17 turnovers in the first half. First half. Seven seconds to shoot. Four seconds difference in the two clocks. Akinjo lobs for Sohan. He missed the dunk. And that was, whoa, that's a three-pointer. That first buzzer that went off was the shot clock buzzer. It wasn't the end of the half buzzer. But UCA, UCA misinterpreted that, put up a shot from beyond midcourt and hit the three-pointer. And that makes it 43-20, Baylor at halftime. That's about a 60-foot three. Oh, that's hilarious. But you're right, John. It just was wasn't really sure what was happening. You can see some of the Baylor players starting walking to the locker room, and then Hall lets one fly, and it hit nothing but that. UCA ends with a long-range three, 43-20 at halftime. Ready to begin the second half here in the Farrell Center tonight, the Paul J. Meyer Arena, Baylor number nine in the nation. Looking to set a new school record with a win tonight would be their 16th consecutive home court victory. Three times in the past, they have won 15 in a row, and that's where they stand right now, and with a big lead at halftime over Central Arkansas, 43 to 20. Scott Drew with the team around him. Final directives before they come out on the floor to begin the second half. Bad, really solid first half by the Bears. 40.5% shooting, only 11% from three-point range, one for nine. Still, the Bears lead by 23. Yeah, they've just done other things really well. They've finally gotten to the free throw line. They're 8 of 12 there. That's been a problem for them the first couple of games. But they've got so many weapons. John C uh, Brown and Cryer both into double digits. But Meyer can get there. Flagler obviously can get there. A Kenjo on a given night. I mean, these guys still have the firepower they had a year ago. One thing Coach Drew talked about before the game was how defense is typically a little ahead of the offense this time of year because defense is about rules and offense is about chemistry. I, this team right now is pretty much in sync. They share the ball really well. 33 assists our last time out. Pretty good indication that chemistry is developing. Here we go, beginning the second half. Switch in. Central shoots in front of their bench. Anthony Boone. Standing in front of the bench, the head coach for the Central Arkansas Bears. That is a travel, and that is turnover number 18 on the night by Central Arkansas. 
promised you another story about Anthony Boone. Stephen Hawkins, uh, Ole Miss grad, won't like this. <laughs> but uh, Boone was on the team in 1998 that lost to Valparaiso on Bryce Drew's last second shot. One of the all-time great moments in NCAA tournament history. Coach Boone was on that Ole Miss team. Don't you know it just turns his stomach oh. to see that? <laughs> and they play it all the time. Every year. In March. Every year. Well, Scott Drew was a, uh, a manager on that team. Homer Drew was the head coach. Bryce was the man who hit that shot that will live forever, not only in Valparaiso lore, but in NCAA tournament history. You know, that's really the game that sort of kick-started Valpo right. in the national, at least the national spotlight. Uh, people knew about Valparaiso then. It really discovered what a great thing the Drew family had going on there. Foul, and we've got free throws coming. Foul was called on Flo Thamba, his second. It's Darius Hall at the free throw line. First point of the second half at the free throw line for Darius Hall, the junior from Little Rock. And Matt Meyer on the line, shaking his head left to right. It's just, you know, it's just not his night. Not finished yet, obviously, but he's 0 for 5 from the three-point line, 2 of 10 overall. He's got shots, though. I mean, he's he's got the green light. This guy has earned the right to play that kind of role on the team. They'll go down at some point. A little backcourt pressure by Central Arkansas. James Akinjo breaks that himself, brings it up. Akinjo around the screen of Thamba. To Cryer for three, and he nails it from the left wing. You know, it's almost automatic for him. He is so confident that it's going in the, the second it leaves his hands. He's a catch-and-shoot kind of guy, and he loves in the, being in the backcourt with Akinjo because Akinjo's going to find him and deliver it where it needs to be. Bears have made as many three-pointers in the first minute of this second half as they did the entire first half. Short jumper, baseline left, no good by Chatham. Rebound, Baylor. Meyer looks for help, gets the ball away. Round to Akinjo, left corner three, Cryer missed on that one. Kendall Brown, the rebound, put back, rolls off. Fight for the loose ball, and Darius Hall has it for Central Arkansas. Being hounded every step down the floor. Ball finds its way in the hands of Jarrett Chatham, who dunks it. Well, the game's getting a little looser now, and maybe that's an opportunity for UCA to get something going in transition because their half-court offense in the first half just was non-existent. Scored only 20 points because of that. Now with the game uh, in uh, having a little more of a end-to-end -end feel. Again, in transition here, not a thing of beauty, but it ends up uh, in the bucket where they've got a little bit of room to operate in the open floor. That's a fast break bucket, and maybe that's their best offense as they uh, look to get back into this game. Chatham the bucket, 46-24 our score, making 49-24. Cryer hitting again from three-point range. Now, Cryer continues to shoot it really well. He comes into this game shooting 63% from the floor, 58% from the three-point line. He is on fire, but he can really score. It's not something that he's afraid to do. Break the other way on the missed layup. Meyer back outside to Cryer. He lobs it up for Kendall Brown, who flushes it. And there is a turndown shot by Cryer to get a better one to his teammate, Brown. He had a wide open look, little head and shoulder fake. Defender got off of his feet, out of the play, and he could have shot it, but he sent it right up to the rim for Brown to go get it. Again, better shot, best shot. Another steal, this one by Matthew Meyer. Bears had 14 steals at halftime. The school record is 21. Meyer's going to take it the whole way and lay it in. 53-24, Baylor up. Three minutes, 15 seconds into the second half. Yeah, Bears have outscored UCA 10-4 already here in the second half. Shot swatted away, the block by Thumba. The break, Cryer. Cryer will lay it in for the Bears. Great outlet pass, too. The block by Thumba. Kick to Brown. Brown saw that Cryer and Akinjo were both off to the races and just threw it up the floor. They got again from one end of the floor to the other in warp speed. I mean, it was just a couple of passes and Cryer's laying it in. Biggest lead of the night for the Bears at 55-24. There's a pass underneath and somehow Darius Hall was wide open for the dunk. 
55-26. James Akinjo will walk it across the midcourt strike. Bears looking to get to 3-0 on the season with a win tonight. Akinjo, nice little soft <laughs> flick of the wrist for the runner in the paint. Yeah, that's a nice combination. Cryer and Akinjo in the backcourt, they complement each other well. Now a foul called away from the ball. And it's going to be Baylor's ball of 57-26 on Central Arkansas. Told you battle with the Bears here at the Farrell Center tonight. Baylor up 57 to 26. How about this by our crack crew, Pat? Uh, uh, here's a comparison of Black Bears. In both of these schools, their mascots are Black Bears. Mm -hmm. Compared to your average Division I basketball player. There you go. Average height, five foot seven for the Black Bears. Six five for a D1 player. Average weight, 175 pounds for the Animal Bear. 206.2 for the Division I player. Average speed, pretty close, actually. Black Bear's faster. And naps per day, two to three for the Black Bear. No studies found on D1 naps for the players. I think we've been on enough road trips to know that they get their share of naps. Oh, there. they do. Yeah, they're not sleep deprived, I can promise you that. And those are averages, right, John? Yes, exactly. Because, I mean, I've seen some guys on the floor tonight going faster than 19.2 miles an hour <laughs> and could terrible. probably outrun a black bear. I think you're right. That's right. Yes, yes. Uh, that would be an interesting challenge. Can you outrun a black bear? <laughs> <laughs> My money's on Brown. <laughs> Kendall Brown. <laughs> There's a block underneath. Average hand length, you could add that in there. Eight and a half inches for a player and five inches for the black player. <laughs> That's good stuff. Good comparison with uh, two teams with Bears as their mascots. I wanted to check or ask if Central Arkansas had any live Bear mascots on their campus. Oh, we found out they do not. Of course, we have Joy and Lady, the beloved Bears, on the Baylor campus. Well, these Bears uh, are, are having a little more success offensively, but not much. I mean, it's shots like that, I mean, that it went in. Uh, it doesn't matter how it got there, it just goes in. And UCA, with a little bit of, um, of offensive uh, production that they didn't have in the first half, it doesn't look pretty, but it's better than what they were able to muster in the first. 30 is our score. Kendall Brown, the assist to him for the dunk. Yeah, and that's six assists in the game for Akinjo. That's another guy. We talk about Brown getting points in a hurry. Uh, Akinjo racks up assist very quickly, kind of quietly, but he's always doing stuff like that in the lane, looking to get it to somebody in scoring position. Akinjo can score when he wants to, score when he needs to. I think he's just as happy just helping out. Yeah, I think that's his game. That'll be a charge on James Akinjo, drawn by Colin Cooper of Central Arkansas. Second personal on Akinjo. You know, and it, it might look a little bit out of control, but I'm telling you, I think the Baylor coaching staff is saying, you go. Like, I mean, you know, you, you, you've been playing at a high level for a long enough time. He's got good judgment around that kind of play. You want him going hard. There's another steal that by Kendall Brown, and he finishes on the assist from Akinjo. Another dunk for Kendall Brown. And that's why you want Akinjo going fast. I mean, he makes the play, calls the, calls the charge earlier, but that play doesn't happen if Akinjo hasn't just peered, uh, pissed, uh, put his ears back and gone hard. Drive on the baseline, shot no good by V.J. Reeves, rebound Bears. In a hurry again, Akinjo drives, and he is fouled. You know, again, John, that's that's his game. I mean, you know, each of those three plays, up the floor to Akinjo, he's going right back to Brown. He's really the, the runner of the ship on that play. Here he goes, Akinjo, off to Brown. Akinjo is the guy that led each of those three scoring opportunities. So. Even though he, he caused the charge, you really want him with the ball in his hands, with the floor spread, and letting him go to work. Works his way this time to the free throw line. Baylor tonight, eight of 12 shooting free throws. Central Arkansas, seven of eight. Both teams shooting for seven of nine for uh, Central Arkansas. They're shooting free throws well. 
Kato is back on the court. Elias Kato, the freshman from Australia. Ginjo has another free throw coming. Dale Bonner is back out there for the Bears. Second one good. He hit them both. Fryer will come on. Akinjo goes to the bench. Bears have found their way to the free throw line. They made 10 of 14 in this game coming in. They'd only taken 19 shots in, from the free throw line in two games. I think a large part of that, or the reason that's happened, is Akinjo. Just about, creating. How about 12 points, six rebounds, and seven assists for James Akinjo. Pretty good night. Yeah. And it's a long way from over. Cryer on for him, flips the ball right side to Matthew Meyer. It's around the screen of everyday John, shoots over that screen, no good. Sohan the rebound. Out to Cryer, thought about a three, didn't take it. Cryer now will put up a three. That one is no good, Darius Hall rebounds for Central Arkansas. Yeah, he turned down a better one, you know, a couple of dribbles prior to the one that he finally let go. But Cryer's got the green light as well. He's got 18 in this game. He's made eight of, eight of 14 shots. Baker bounces down low for SK Shitu. Shot never made it to the rim. Jeremy Sohan takes it out of there. Up to Florida Cryer to Meyer. Meyer short jumper is good. It's a good thing about Meyer. He's not gonna quit shooting it. He's 0 for 6 from a three-point line and really struggling to shoot a high percentage, but he's gonna continue to fire it. Nice and finger roll by the uh, freshman Cato for two. Now's the time for Cato to get going. Now is the time. Somebody, UCA with 32, came to life a little bit here in the second half, but not enough to make a game of it. Well done, Inspector. Three straight away is no good. Whistle and a foul. There's ball when we come back. 11.29 to play, second half. Pat Nunley Baylor with the big lead, 67-32, in large part because of James Akinjo this evening. Yeah, I love this guy. 12 points, he's got six rebounds, he's got seven assists. He's in on every play, really, and uh, he's the guy that stirs things up for Baylor offensively. And, John, we're kind of sniffing a triple-double here. Now, there's probably a guy on the Baylor staff, a coach, who's in charge of triple-doubles. Oh, you know it. Oh, yeah, when, when uh, Brown was sniffing that the right. other night, uh, the coaching staff knew about it, let him know about it, told him that's why he was still in the game late. <laughs> and so, I don't know, I mean, we've, we've got 11.29 to play. We'll see if uh, he's got that opportunity, but that kind of player gets that kind of production. Well, he's not the only one. Inbounds to Dale Bonner, who nails the triple from right in front of the Baylor bench. First points tonight for Dale Bonner, the Fa Fairmont State transfer. Kinjo has never had a double-double, much less a triple-double. He'll be back. Nice pass. Good Entry pass. pass leads to that bucket by Eddie Kailu. That's one of the few buckets we've seen from UCA tonight out of a set. But they ran it beautifully and, were, and laid it in because of it. Cryer now answers at the other end, right around his defender. You know, John, we haven't seen much of Adam Flagler in this game. It looks like they're holding him out. There's a miss, but an offensive rebound. Put back, won't fall. Rebound by Jeremy Sohan. Well, maybe for Flagler, that left hand yep. bothering him a little bit, and maybe uh, good to get a little extra rest for him. Yeah, I saw him hold it the other night. He fell, and uh, it looked like it, it stung him a little bit. But this gives Bonner the opportunity to get playing time, and he's playing well. That rebound, the 10th of the night for Jeremy Sohan to go with four points. Short jumper, good by Sohan. Just so smooth in everything he does. You know, and the Bears are, are better at each of the five spots on the floor, really, and that's allowed them to get a little bit out of their half-court rhythm. There's a steal. That is 17 on the night by the Bears. No bucket, but a foul, and Sohan will go to the free throw line. We had 14, Baylor had 14 steals at halftime. They now have 17, and again, the school record is 21. You know, Leading by 40. And John Sohan has 10 rebounds in the game. 
six points but ten rebounds. These guys, each of them, really has the ability to, to do a number of different things very well. Sohan with the steal the other end, works his way to the free throw line, misses the first one. These guys are such great players. Maybe one night it's rebounding, one night it's steals, next night it's double-digit scoring. These guys are players. They missed them both. Sohan can't add to his point total at the line. 9.47 to go. Taylor up by a cool 40 on Central Arkansas. These teams have played uh, three times previously, and the average margin of victory all Baylor wins has been 40 points. Gatua loses the handle. Turnover, Baylor. Cameron Hunter the other way. It's going to be a foul. See if that's on Dale Bonner. It is. Lothamba will come back in. He's at the scorer's table. So John, this is a, a UCA team that's uh, really at the ground floor right now. Anthony Boone took over a year ago as the head coach. And uh, they've taken some lumps here early. First free throw is off. St. Louis and Butler had their way, really, with Central Arkansas. Bears leave here. Uh, the, the UCA Bears leave here, go to Oral Roberts, play at Arkansas uh, before they get into their league. They'll play at Texas A&M. But uh, this is a young team. It's guard dominated, and they're just trying to learn and grow and take some lumps early. Tough schedule, not shine away. No. Third straight year that they have played Baylor. 93-56 was the score last year, last uh, December 29th here in the Farrell Center. Akinjo is back out there. Cryer now with 20 points on the night. Second straight 20-point game for LJ Cryer. It's on the layup by James Akinjo. Kailu, jumper, three is good from straight away. You know, things have loosened up some in the game. 74-38, the uh, end result really not in doubt. And that's allowed Central Arkansas to play a little looser. Bears aren't showing them the same pressure they showed them early. It's not the same game, game that it was for the first eight or nine minutes of it. Kendra nice no look pass to Flo Thamba. Missed the short shot. But a whistle and a foul, and Thamba maybe shooting free throws. You know, John, that's a growing edge for Thamba. Even though he's an experienced guy, he's been around a while. Uh, just the ability to finish at the rim, whether it's an offensive rebound and a putback in traffic, or that that time taking a nice pass from Akinjo and finishing the play. He struggled to do that at times and continues to work on it. Baylor sitting at 18 steals now on the night ties for the fifth most in Baylor school history. Most since 1999, so it's been a while. Has been a while. And still eight and a half minutes to play. So again, I think John Adam Flagler is probably done for the night. Hasn't played much in this one. I think because of the hand, but Bonner's getting some really good minutes. Bonner gives to Ken Joe. To Meyer, strong move in the layup for Matthew Meyer. One thing he does really well, he's kind of become a playmaker, not in the classic sense, but I mean, he can do that, and he's got the green light to do that. He's big and strong, he's 225 now, and he can handle himself in traffic. Jared Chatham, a little bigger than James Akinjo, just jumps and shoots over him from the paint. Makes it 76-40, Baylor on top, as we go under eight minutes to play here in the second half in the Farrell Center. Bonner to Sohan. If it's short, right rim. Cooper gives the ball to B.J. Reeves. Reeves into the paint. No good. Sohan the rebound and fouled by Reeves. That'll get us to a break with 7.39 to play. Baylor 76, Central Arkansas 40. 76-40, our score. There's a look into the bench of the uh, Central Arkansas Bears from the Atlantic Sun. Here's the preseason poll. That conference has really taken an overhaul. Central Arkansas picked last, uh, 12th out of 12 schools. Newcomers to the league this year include 
uh, Eastern Kentucky and Jacksonville State coming over from the Ohio Valley Conference and UCA, UCA from the Southland Conference. You There's know, some work to do with that young team for Coach Anthony Boone in Central Arkansas. That's right. I'm pulling for the Ospreys of North Florida I like and the Ospreys. Matt Driscoll. There's a steal. Is that number 19 on the night, Daniel? I think it is. There's... Ball's going to stay with Baylor there. Sohan couldn't get the shot to fall. So now that is the second most steals in a game in Baylor history. Or is that That's 19, so it ties for the second most. And the most in a game since 2001 against Harden-Simmons. School record is 21 for steals. Pass out, stolen away. Cato with the steal for Central Arkansas. Baker firing a three. It's no good. Matt Meyer the rebound. James Akinjo out there. 12 points for Akinjo. The feed to Thamba. He's fouled on his trip to the basket. You know, that's what we were talking about, John. I mean, that, that's that's a finish. You get to the free throw line. Thamba has become a really nice free throw shooter. But when you take the ball from Akinjo, you're open, you're a target, you catch it particularly at, at Thamba's size, got to finish. Well, what a great, uh, I mean, everybody had a great NCAA tournament, but I remember at the first of the year last year, John, there was a question about whether the Bears could protect the rim with Chachua and Thamba in the low post. They were going to play that position by committee. One of the coaches said, you know, we can win. Where we are now, I'm not sure we can win-win, like win-win. <laughs> And at the end of the season, he said, well, we answered that question. Yeah. <laughs> we could protect the rim, and we can win-win. Wow. Wasn't that something? That was the question, wasn't it? Going it was. Year, it was. Freddie Gillespie moving on. That's right. Well, they're protecting the rim now, and Thamba can deliver defensively. They're not counting on him much offensively, but when he has those opportunities, he's got to deliver. 78-40, Bears lead. Baylor Bears lead. Six and a half minutes to go. There's another steal. That one by Flo Thamba. That'll be 20 on the night and the second most in a game in school history. That's a hard pass to catch. And we talked in the first half about almost an identical play where Sohan was able to catch it and finish in traffic, but that time just wasn't able to do it. When that ball's coming off of the floor with some English on it, you're running as fast as you can. That's a hard, uh, hard pass to catch. Baker gives the ball away to Chatham. Chatham has it stripped away by Matthew Meyer. Meyer in the corner to Bonner. A three is no good. Rebound Central Arkansas. Now by our count, that was steal number 21. So Baylor has tied the school record for steals. There's a collision, Bonner. So they are looking for that play. The, the Bears, uh, and they, of course, chart charges taken. Here's the steal again. Somebody reaching in. This time it's Meyer. And that is a familiar scene tonight. A steal at one end, offense at the other. Bears have gotten a bunch of points off turnovers. 23 off of the, um, uh, let's see, 27 turnovers wow. that have been cons uh, committed by UCA. And 21 steals ties the school record set against Iowa State December 5th, 1990 by Baylor. Meyer drives, loops it up, shot no good, tipped up, won't fall. Darius Hall runs it out for Central Arkansas, drops it off for Baker, long three, no good. Out of bounds and over to Baylor. You know, Chachua in for Thamba. Those two guys have been a nice one-two punch for Baylor. We talked about that, John. Both of them offer rim protection, but they play that low post almost by committee, and they have been a nice combination, particularly for that team a year ago. Great screeners, both of them. Kenjo jets into the front court, then loses the handle, taken away by SK Shitu. And a block at the other end by the Bears. Bonner ahead to Akinjo. He will lay it in for two more. All fueled by the block. I mean, that really did start the fast break. And the Bears were off to the races. Akinjo with a nice evening, John. He's got 14 now, six and eight. 
So still, you know, within striking distance of a triple-double. We'll see if he can get it with 4.45 to play. Genjo averaging six points a game through the first two, but 14 tonight. Jordan Turner on the floor for the Bears and guilty of the foul. I think that's what they're saying. They're going to come and look at the monitor also. Yeah, they are. Kenjo with the lay-in. Might have been some excessive contact. So the officials will look at the replay monitor on the far side of the floor. Well, I say that they're not at the replay monitor. They're uh, more at center court. With four minutes, 44 seconds to play in the game. Central Arkansas football is uh, five and five on the year. They'll play in Stephenville against Tarleton State coming up on Saturday. Finish their season. Baylor football going great guns. Big win over Oklahoma. Headed to Manhattan to play K-State on Saturday. You know, what a day for uh, basketball and football. We got the Bears at noon here against Stanford. And then uh, K-State, John, what, at 4.30? Yes. Yep. Just in time to catch both of them. <laughs> With the nap in between. There you go. <laughs> I'm a black bear. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yep. So, oh. I, I, you know, John, I guess they didn't have to look at the replay. The official saw it and made the call. Technical foul called, I believe, on Cooper. Right, Colin Cooper. Here it is again. Watch the left side of the screen. Cooper uh, really throws Jordan Turner down to the ground. Jordan's a big and strong guy. Technical foul, and Kenjo shooting the free throws. It's Baylor to 81 on the night. It's the second one. Yep, Bears now 13 of 20 from the free throw line. They've gotten there a lot. 62% is not something to write home about. The right side of the screen there, there's where that technical foul occurred. Charged to Colin Cooper. It's going to be Baylor's ball after the free throws. Yeah, now a push off called against uh, Jordan Turner. So a little turnaround there. Not a technical foul, I don't think. No, I don't think so. But a lot of late contact. You'd think a 41-point differential, 442 to play in the game. This would be kind of a play on, but if you see it, you've got to call it. So the foul on Jordan Turner of Baylor. Central Arkansas has the ball. Four minutes, 42 seconds to go. Could reset that shot clock also, right? Here we go. Inbounding into the backcourt to Cameron Hunter. Hunter. Kailu. Down low to Hall. Head fake. A couple of defenders there. Shot up, no. Kailu to the rebound. Three in the left corner is no good by Hunter, and Baylor gets the rebound up the floor. Jordan Turner, the lay-in for the Bears. Nice pass from McKinjo. He knew exactly where he was going to go with it when he caught it. Almost a touch pass, got the outlet from Chatua, and immediately sent it up the floor to Turner. Ooh, nice underhand dish. Jonathan Chumwa Chatua with two. And I mean, just rapid fire. Akinjo with a couple more assists. They've got him with eight now. May have shorted him a couple. But he got back-to-back -back assist, and he's at 15, eight assists, and six rebounds with 348 to play. And the uh, triple-double watch continues. Yeah, I think those haven't shown up yet. He, no. he has been sitting on eight for a while. They just gave him nine. There you go, okay. So one away from uh, what would be his first double-double of his career. Kyalu with a finger roll. Zach Loveday and Dane Danger off the Baylor bench. They'll check in next dead ball. Three minutes, 20 seconds and counting here in the second half. Akinjo, a three, and it's good. You know, it's nice to get him going. I mean, he hasn't really shot the ball well. I think that's why the coaching staff has him on the floor. He's found his shooting touch, 
and they're going to let him just enjoy that for a while. He's four of eight now from the floor, hit his only three. That last one, he's having a nice night. He's got eight assists again. Well, actually, nine, I think. They're going between nine and eight. We'll figure that out in a minute, but nice to see Akinjo play well. And 15, uh, 18 points after that three-pointer, after averaging six a game in the first two. Bucket and a foul, chance for a three-point play. Free throw when we come back. 2.45 remaining. Baylor's doubled up. UCA. Big night for Baylor's James Akinjo, originally out of Oakland, California, transfer from Arizona. Pat, he is sitting right now with 18 points on the night, six rebounds, and 10 assists. It's the first double-double of his career here or at Arizona. Yeah, and he's on the floor. I, I think a couple of reasons for that. Maybe he can get a triple-double, but also he's just playing so well that I think the coaches want him to just experience that, feel good about that. He's doing everything well. You know, when, you, when you've when you dished out 10 assists and you've scored 18 points, that's a lot of production. And then he's got a couple of steals to go along with that. He's had a great night. Free throw is good by Kyalude out of the timeout. 88-45 our score. Two and a half minutes to play in this one. There's will set a new school record with their 16th consecutive home court victory with this win tonight. Three times they had won 15 in a row at home. Turnaround jumper no good by Dane Danger. Zach Loveday is also out there. Kato. Bounces the ball, shot it past Churchill bounds and out of bounds. You know, that was reminiscent of Davion Mitchell. I'm not saying it was Mitchell, but that on the ball defense by Akinjo was relentless. It really was and really didn't give Cato any opportunities to get a pass away. That's really good on the ball defense and that's going to get Akinjo out. He's had a great night and he finishes it with a nice play on the defensive end. A couple of subs off the Baylor bench. Uh, one of them is Kajana Love. That is Langston Love's brother. Just added to the team, just added to the roster, I think maybe today. So Kajana Love is out there. And that is, uh, that is Mitchell Paul. Mitchell played in the game earlier. Mitchell, a walk-on, a senior from Leewood, Kansas. So how about that end of the bench? These guys getting some time on the floor here in the final two minutes. Yeah, one of those guys, Zach Loveday, really needs time. He's uh, progressed. He's got to be able to help them, hopefully sooner than later. But what he really needs is time with the lights on against different opposition. This is a guy that's really going to help them probably more so a year from now. But they really like the way he's coming on. Steal by Loveday. If he gets credit for a steal there, that's going to be the... Uh, School record number of steals in the game. End to end, little hully gully. There is Love Day with the ball. Ahead to Paul. Mitchell Paul in the paint, shot up, and it's good. Mitchell Paul scores in the final minute. You know, made it look actually pretty easy, and then he gets an, an almost steal at the other end. And what was a fairly quiet crowd has come to life because of plays like this and then goes to the other end, doesn't forget about his defense. He had to manufacture that one, and that's over a guy that's about five inches taller than he is. He held that big smile until he got to the other end of the floor <laughs> right. and the ball got knocked out of bounds, then uh, broke it open. 90 to 45, Baylor leads, final minute. In the paint, jump hook rolls in for V.J. Reeves. 45 seconds to go. Jonas Munson, seven-foot freshman, is on the floor for Central Arkansas. Love day, lobs for Danger. Danger, shot up, no. And he got the ball and put it up and in. Dane Danger scores. You know, he's 6'9", 270, and so he ought to own the low post when he catches it there. Nice move, just a little finger roll from the re reverse side of the basket. Nice to see him get in the scoring column. Dato misses. Here's Mitchell Paul with the ball. Ball could, game could end with the ball in his hands. Now 10 seconds to go. And he'll dribble out the final seconds of this game. And Baylor's third win in three games this season. 
Baylor wins big over Central Arkansas tonight, 92-47, the final score. So John, the Bears now 3-0 on the season. They, they've looked really good. They've uh, beaten a quality opponent in Nickel State and then came in behind this and got, again, a lot of different production from a lot of different guys. Four different players in double digits, led by L.J. Cryer, who led all scores with 20, averaging 16 and a half a game, just continues to really shoot it well. Nine of 15 from the floor tonight. Double-double on the night by James Akinjo with 18 points and 10 assists. Baylor does finish with 21 steals, ties the school record with 21 steals on the night. Next up, Baylor and Stanford coming up on Saturday, noon Central Time. You can watch it on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Final score, Baylor 92, Central Arkansas 47. For Pat Nunley and our entire crew, I'm John Moore.